everyone, it's Maki here. I'm a huge fan of the Mobile Suit Gundam series. Today, I'm going to tell you about the Z Gundam. I'm so excited! The Z Gundam is a special robot or mobile suit maze developed as part of the Z project by a group called Antia Federation Forces Organization. What's amazing about this maze is that it can change its shape. It's designed to be able to enter the atmosphere on its own, and it has a very powerful attack capability. There were many trials and tribulations before the Z Gundam was completed. Initially, they were developing a different model called the Delta Gundam, but they encountered problems with it. However, fortunately, they were able to capture a model called the Gundam Eki from the enemy organization Titans, and they used it to complete the Z Gundam. Furthermore, this Z Gundam can transform into a shape called the Wave Rider. This allows it to protect its body during atmospheric entry. It's just like a superhero, isn't it? However, on the other hand, because of this transformation feature, the structure of the machine became very complex as a result. The production cost increased, making it difficult to mass produce. In addition, the Z Gundam is equipped with a special device called the Biosensor. When this resonates with the pilot's special abilities called Mute Abilities, it becomes even more high performance. It's very powerful but it seems difficult to master. So, it can be said that it is a machine that chooses its pilot. However, its complexity and high performance are the charms of the Z Gundam. The world of the Gundam series is a story that explores the advancement of technology and the potential of humans, and it's really exciting. The Z Gundam is equipped with a variety of ornaments, each playing a different role. 16 Vulcan Gun This machine gun is equipped in the head. It can fire rapidly intercepting incoming missiles, and at close range, it can inflict significant damage on enemy machines. However, it can't be used in Wave Rider mode. Grenade Launcher Grenade Launcher installed in the forearm. The usage can be changed by switching cartridges, but again it cannot be used in Wave Rider mode. Beam Saber A close combat weapon developed exclusively for the Z Gundam. It has a very high output compared to other machines produced in the same world. Beam gun a weapon that can be fired using the handle of the beam saber. While less powerful than the beam rifle, it can be useful in some situations for keeping enemies at bay. Shield a defensive and offensive equipment in raw mode. It protects the machine and is useful during atmospheric re-entry. Beam rifle a long barreled beam rifle. It can emit a beam saber from the muzzle. The firing sound is also unique and cool, isn't it? Hyper Mega Launcher, the Z Gundam's biggest armament. It has a long beam cannon, and the thrusters attached to the rear of the barrel also provide thrust assist. The use and potential of these armaments change, depending on the form of the mobile suit. Moreover, the power of the Z Gundam's armaments is demonstrated not only by their performance, but also by their diversity and the way they are used according to the battle situation by Camille. Let's talk about the Wave Rider mode of the Z Gundam. This is the cruising mode of the Z Gundam, where propulsion is concentrated in the rear of the unit, so it possesses the combat capabilities and acceleration of a space combat vehicle level. Impressive, isn't it? It can also enter the atmosphere and fly under on the gravity on its own, but its maneuverability is linear. And guess what? It can even carry another mobile suit on its back and enter the atmosphere together. However, you have to be careful not to exit the top way. Also in the, there's a scene where Judo Ashta pilots it and he shows a shark tongue, demonstrating high mobility and acceleration. 
Moreover, this way rider mode has a complicated transformation mechanism thanks to which the propulsion system and the thermonuclear fusion reactor are installed in the shin section when it transforms the flying armor and the shields are positioned on the lower part of the machine, making it possible to enter the atmosphere even without the buried system. Isn't that amazing? And it can even carry other mobile suits and operate like a sub flight system. This is an accidental feature that resulted from this mode being developed based on the operational data of the flying armor. Interesting, isn't it? Let's talk about the mysterious abilities of the Z Gundam. First off, there's this energy field called the Siod. It's a phenomenon caused by the biosensor, but its cause is somewhat unclear. However, it reacts to the will of the pilot, individuals associated with the pilot, or those around the machine, and exhibits various reactions. For instance, it can repel beams or slay the beam saber with an output beyond its rating or immobilize enemy machines equipped with biosensors. Isn't that amazing? Additionally, when Camille Bion's high nudie abilities resonate with the Z Gundam's biosensor, another mysterious ability appears. This doesn't have a formal name, but it's clearly referred to as Hyperation or Hyper Z by some fans. This dramatically enhances the performance of the machine. It can surround itself with a pink field, generate a barrier that neutralizes beams greatly extend its beam saber, absorb the residual thoughts of those who have perished on the battlefield, and interfere with the control of mobile suits that utilize the cyclamine system. While these abilities are mysterious, they underpin the Sea Gundam's combat operations. There are rumors that the numerous Minovsky particles dispersed in intense battlefields may also be playing a role, but it's not entirely clear. Still, these abilities make the Z Gunner an even more special machine. Let's talk about the final showdown. In Mobile Suit Z Gunner, it was such an exhilarating scene, wasn't it? This took place during the final battle of the Grias War, when the protagonist Camille O'Brien fought against Pactia's style because the Camille absorbed the thoughts of the deceased, rendering the O uncontrollable. Then he rammed into the O and Sayoku with the wave rider along with those thoughts, achieving victory however as a result. Camille himself suffered a mental breakdown. It was so dramatic, wasn't it? In the novel version, Camille didn't make a suicide attack. Instead, he generated a barrier and knocked the all away, obliterating Sayaku with the colony laser. In the movie version, just like in the TV series, the wave rider blown away by the explosion of the Earl responded to Foyer's call and transformed back into Z Gundam, and Camille's consciousness returned to the real world. It was such a moving moment, wasn't it? Although the depiction of the end of the war is slightly different in each version, all of them allowed us to appreciate the MAGA themes of Z Gunnam, didn't they? That's it for this explanation. Did you enjoy it? I love Z Gunnam, and it's a popular model. When you look at the entire Gunnam series, and various versions of it appear as well. I'll continue to explain various models in the future. Please subscribe to the channel and give it a thumbs up. Bye bye!